7.3 Anti-Differentiation by Parts Product Rule in Integral Form When u and v are differentiable functions of x, the product rule for differentiation tells us that if we take the derivative of the product of two functions, that's equal to the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Integrating both sides with respect to x and rearranging leads to the integral equation. We can take the integral of u, that's the integral of this one over here, and we can minus over the v du, and that's equal to the integral of uv minus, minus that over, integral of v du. Well, that's equal to uv, uv right there, minus the integral of v du. When this equation is written in the simpler differential notation, we obtain the following formula. So in other words, when you kind of simplify all that nasty notation, you get integration by parts formula, which is the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. And that's really what you need to know right here. Actually, what you need to do, know to do integral by parts is that piece right there. uv minus integral of v du. Example one, using integration by parts. Evaluate integral of x cosine of x. We're going to choose two things. We're going to choose the u and we're going to choose the dv. And to choose the u, you usually want to pick the function that if you took enough derivatives would go to zero. So this one, the x, the derivative of x is one and the derivative of one is zero. So we're gonna choose u to be x. And then what's left is to pick dv as cosine of dx. So cosine x dx. We want du, that's equal to 1 dx. And now we want to integrate this piece and we'll say v is equal to the sine of x. Well, integration by parts says that the antiderivative of this is equal to u, which is x, u, v, x sine of x, minus the integral of v du. So we have sine of x and du is dx. Well now we can take the antiderivative of sine of x and we have x sine of x and then the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine so we have plus cosine of x and then plus c. Now if we've taken the antiderivative and gotten this answer that means we should take we should be able to take this derivative and go right back to the beginning. We have if, well this is the answer first of all, we've answered the question. But if we want to show that the answer is actually right, we're going to do the derivative. We have first times derivative of second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x and the derivative of the constant is zero. Well sine of x is cancel and we get right back to where we started. Repeated use of integration by parts. Well, we're going to let u equal the function that if we took enough derivatives, we would get to zero. So we'll let u equal x squared. We'll let dv equal the rest, which is e to the x dx. And then du is equal to 2x dx. And if we integrate both sides, we get v is equal to ex. Well now integration by parts says take u times v, we have x squared, e to the x, and then minus the integral of v du, which is 2x e to the x dx. Well we still don't know how to take the antiderivative of this, so we'll just do integration by parts again. We will let u equal 2x, we'll let dv equal e to the x, du is equal to 2 dx and if we integrate this piece we get v is equal to e to the x and I see I forgot the dx here. Well now we're going to bring down this piece right here. We have x squared e to the x minus and now we'll do integration by parts to do this part right here. Minus u times v which is 2x e to the x minus the integral of v du. 
we have e to the x and du is 2 dx. We'll put the 2 here and the dx here. Well now we can actually do the antiderivative of 2 e to the x. The answer is x squared e to the x minus 2 x e to the x and now if we distribute the negative this will become plus 2 e to the x and then plus c. Solving an initial value problem. Solve the differential equation dy dx equals x natural log of x subject to the initial condition y equals 1 when x equals 1. Well in this case if we let don't write this down, I'm, I'm actually going to erase this. If we let u equal x and dv equal natural log of x dx, then how are we going to take the antiderivative of natural log of x? I know what the derivative is, I don't know what the integral is. So we're not going to be able to choose u as the one that would go to zero. First of all, we would separate the variables to begin with we'd have x natural log of x dx and in this case we're gonna let u equal the natural log of x because I know what the derivative is I'm not real sure what the antiderivative is we'll let dv equal x dx so we'll let the dv equal these two things now du equals 1 over x dx and v is equal to 1 half x squared. So integration by parts says that y is equal to u times v which is one half x squared natural log of x minus the integral of v du. Well v is one half x squared and du is one over x dx. And then uh, we have y is equal to 1 half x squared natural log of x minus the integral we can pull out a 1 half actually x squared over x is x dx well now we can finally take the antiderivative we have y equals 1 half x squared natural log of x minus 1 half times 1 half x squared and then plus c well, we have this initial condition. Uh, to find the c, we have negative 1 is equal to 1 half times 1 squared times the natural log of 1 minus 1 fourth, because 1 half times 1 half gives you 1 fourth, times 1 squared and then plus c. Well, the natural log of 1 is 0, so all of this, this piece right here becomes 0. We have negative 1 is equal to uh, negative one-fourth plus c. Now when we add one-fourth over we get negative three-fourths. So the final answer is y equals one-half x squared natural log of x minus one-fourth x squared and then minus three-fourths. Example 4, solving for the unknown integral. Let's let u equal e to the x and we'll let dv equal cosine of x dx. Now if we're looking to let u equal the one that goes to zero we have a problem here because neither one of these go to zero. du is equal to e, x, e to the x dx and v is equal to sine of x. Well now the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to u times v we have e to the x sine of x minus the integral of v du which is e to the x sine of x dx well we really didn't get very far because we still can't take the integral it's very similar to what we started with but let's do integration by parts again let's let u equal e to the x again this time we'll let dv equal sine of x dx now du is equal to e to the x dx 
and when we take the integral of these, we get v is equal to negative cosine of x. Well, now we bring down everything except for the integral. We have integral of e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to e to the x sine of x and then minus we have u times v which is negative e to the x cosine of x and then minus the integral of v du which is negative e to the x cosine of x dx well look we have e to the x cosine of x dx here we almost have the exact same thing on this side except for the negative let's kinda of clean up these negative signs we have e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x and then minus 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 which will be minus integral of e to the x cosine of x dx well look we have this is integral of e to the x cosine x and this is the same thing so here's what we're going to do now we're going to add the integral of e to the x cosine of x to both sides so we'll add integral e to the x cosine of x dx and now on this left side we have two of these we have two integral of e to the x cosine of x dx and that's equal to e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x and now to solve what we're trying to solve for we just have to multiply both sides by one half so the final answer the integral that we wanted to find in the first place is equal to one half actually we can do e to the x over two times sine of x plus cosine of x and then plus c example five using tabular integration evaluate x squared e to the x dx well we certainly could do integration by parts by picking a u and picking a v but when you have a function that if you take the derivative enough times it goes to zero we can use what's called tabular and we set up two columns we set up one column for the derivative and we set up one column for the integration we start out with x squared then we take the derivative which is 2x derivative of that is 2 the derivative of that is 0 and once you hit 0 you stop then we start with this function right here and we take the integral which is e to the x in this case then another integral e to the x and another integral is e to the x then we start drawing little diagonals so we go from the top the first row uh, to the left and down to the second row on the right and then we keep drawing diagonals like this and we're pairing these up then we start with a plus always start with plus then a minus and then a plus and we would keep alternating if there was more derivatives and more integrals well the answer is positive x squared e to the x you don't really need the positive I suppose x squared e to the x and then minus minus 2x e to the x and that's from this 2x here and this ex and then plus 2e to the x so plus 2e to the x and then plus c using tabular integration well we have a function that if we took the derivatives enough times it would go to zero so we have the dx the derivative column and then we have the integral column we start with x to the third then 3x squared then 6x and then 6 and then finally 0 and that's where we stop on the integral side we have sine of x the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine of x the integral of that is negative sine of x and then we have cosine of x and finally we have sine of x and we would get right back to where we started well now we draw the diagonals another diagonal another diagonal and finally the last one 
and then we go plus, minus, plus, minus. So we always start with a plus, and then it alternates. So here's the answer. We have negative x to the third cosine of x, negative x to the third cosine of x, and then plus, because we have negative and negative, plus 3x squared sine of x, and then plus 6x cosine of x, and then finally minus 6 sine of x. So minus 6 sine of x, and then plus c. Anti-differentiating uh, anti natural log of x. We're going to let u equal the natural log of x, and then we have to let dv equal to just dx. And we take care of natural log of x, we take care of dx. Well, dv equals 1 over x, and then a dx. And then if we integrate this side, we get v equals x. Well, integration by parts says u times v minus the integral of uh, v du. So x times du, which is 1 over x dx. So the antiderivative is x, natural log of x. This is going to be 1. The antiderivative of 1 is x, minus x, and then plus c. Well, some people memorize that the antiderivative of natural log of x is x, natural log of x, minus x.